Well, hello everyone. Thank you for being a part of our live class as we are learning how to step into the throne room and hear the voice of God and echo the cry of Jesus. I want to welcome all of you for joining us. And hey, would you be kind enough to share this and let others, if you're able to, and let others uh, take part of our class tonight. It's a free class. We're welcoming uh, everyone to join us, especially we I see some of our partners are already here with us, and we welcome all of you. You're very special to my wife and I, and Candace has some fantastic things to share with you. Uh, you know, I, I know I've said this before, but uh, she and I, we, we have walked with Jesus a combined 100 years in our journey. Now, some of those years, we were not hearing very clearly the, the voice of the Lord. But in these last 25, 35 years or so, the Lord has really tuned her heart and her ears to hear from the Lord. And I as well, but I, I just defer to my wife because she is special and uh, anointed and prophetic. So she's going to come live with us here in just a moment. But I want to welcome all of you as we get settled in. Let us know where you're from and, and thank you for joining us for this live period. This live class tonight our chapter is hearing the voice of god and we're going to spend next week as well on this very very important subject of hearing the voice of god because prayer must be two-way relationship what relationship is there that's only one way one person doing all the speaking i hope you don't have a relationship in your life like that and I hope you're not that one person that's doing all the speaking. There are times where we must be silent and hear and listen what God is saying. And I think this live class is a wonderful opportunity for us to do so, that we can hear what God is saying. I mean, the world right now is, it seems like it's coming apart at the seams, doesn't it, with uh, an invasion of Ukraine. And and uh, we're, we're doing this, uh, for those that may be watching, uh, you know, a year or two down the road, we're doing this in uh, mid-February, towards the end of February of 2022. And uh, I believe God has this situation. I do not believe this is the end of the world. I do not believe this is a lead up to Armageddon. I do not think that's where we are, friends, in this timetable. I could be wrong, but so could you. And whether we're wrong or not about our eschatology, what's important is that we devote our heart to hearing God speak right now. Today, if you hear my voice, uh, obey and, and hearken what you hear. That's what the Lord said in the book of Hebrews. Today, if you hear my voice, listen to what I'm saying. And then when uh, Jesus came to the seven churches in the book of Revelation, he says, if, if anyone who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And I believe the Spirit is saying to the churches, let's pray. Let's come back to the sacred altar. Let's come back to the pillar of fire, and let's give our heart in sacred devotion to God in prayer, morning, noon, and night. May we become prayer on two legs and a walking prayer meeting. That's what this throne room prayer class is all about. And before we get into this fantastic subject, can't wait, I want to let you know we're going to be doing two giveaways. We're going to give away two books, uh, one of them, and all you have to do to be a part of this if you want to receive a free copy a giveaway today is make sure that you have registered and you can do that by going to passionandfire.com slash live class passionandfire.com slash live class if you uh register you will have the opportunity of being chosen at the end of the show so stay to the very end and we will announce the winner by the way i think i made this matching to my outfit here Okay, the other book is titled Throne Room Prayer, and it was the doctoral thesis that I wrote uh, to get my doctorate, and uh, I put a specialization of prayer. I read maybe 90 commentaries on prayer and then wrote this devotional commentary called Throne Room Prayer, and that will be the other book that you can receive. So, you know, if you'd like, by the way, if you become a partner with us, tonight viewing this if you at the end if you go over to our website passionandfire.com slash partner kit 
you can be a partner to our ministry and we will send you a free copy, complimentary copy of Throne Room Prayer as well. So either way, hopefully you'll get that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this live class. Thank you for our friends that are viewing from around the world, those that stayed up late in the UK, those just starting their day down under in North America and the nations of the world. Thank you, Father, for each one and every family that they represent. Bless them immensely. And I pray that you will pierce our ear to hear you speak and to echo your prayers and to strike the mark with our intercession and hit that bullseye of the heart of God as we come into throne room prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. There's nothing more exciting than hearing the voice of God, uh, to listen, to be a, a divine listener to what God is saying to his people. And we must cultivate a hearing ear. God has given us the capacity to hear him. He's given us the, the, the great ability to hear the voice of the Lord. And he wants us to, to, to hear him daily. Proverbs 8 says, I, I listen daily at the threshold, at the doorpost. I put my heart into the presence of God every morning. And I listen to see what he will say to me. You know, it, to hear the voice of God, to hear him speak, it's been the, the sweet privilege, the sweetest thing of my life, I could say, it was to, is to hear him speak. I can remember him telling me once uh, when I went to go uh, and help a person who was emotionally troubled and, and uh, I, I couldn't get them to answer the door. And I was so troubled that I couldn't, you know, connect with him. I was concerned for his health and well-being. So I went down the three flights of steps, maybe four flights of stairs to my car. And the Lord, I heard him speak and he said, stop right where you are. And I, I knew it was the voice of God, not audible, but I heard it inside of it. Stop. The voice of the Lord spoke. So I stopped and I waited. And just then, his name was Danny. Just then, he, he, he was coming head first. He was going to jump out of the window and kill himself on the pavement right where I had parked the car. But instead, when he threw open the window and was ready to come head first, the first thing he saw was me. And I said, don't do it, Danny. God has something better for your life. And I, it spared his life from suicide. And I thought, look, this has to be the voice of God. There's nobody else that would care for Danny like that so much uh, to speak to me and have me stop frozen that moment. So I learned from then forward to, to develop a hearing ear, a listening ear to, to the heart of God, to put my head upon the, 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 the chest, as it were, of my Lord Jesus and to hear him speak. I want you to look with me at John chapter 10. This is so important. And I may repeat this verse uh, a couple of times because I want us to get this. It's John 10, verse 2 to 5. The sheep recognize the voice of the true shepherd. The sheep recognize the voice of the true shepherd. You don't have to worry about being deceived. You know, we're more concerned about being deceived than we are hearing his voice. Your true shepherd will speak to you and you will recognize that voice. He calls his own by name and he leads them out. For they belong to him, and when he has brought out all his sheep, he walks ahead of them. He doesn't drive them from the from behind. He leads them from for, being forward, and they will follow him. And listen to this. They are familiar with his voice. The sheep of God are familiar with his voice. That tells me that we can learn over time over the years of our lives, that we can learn to hear the voice of our shepherd. But they will run away from strangers and never follow them because it's the voice of a stranger. You know, so I, I Googled before we came on live class, I Googled uh, the voice of the shepherd uh, with sheep. And I found three or four or five different YouTube videos of of strangers they would test this flock of sheep and then send a stranger out to call the sheep and they, they wouldn't even stop grazing uh, two three people tried couldn't get their attention but the shepherd when he stood up and he spoke out to the sheep they all came running to him it was so phenomenal to actually see that uh you know uh before your eyes there on that youtube video but that's so true friends that that you will learn to hear your shepherd. 
what does that say? This John passage has so much to say. It means that it says that Jesus speaks. It's my personal feeling that every day he has a word, a fresh word. You know, our prayer is give us this day our daily bread. And the Greek text could actually be translated, give us today tomorrow's bread. Give me the bread of tomorrow today. Let me have today what will sustain me for tomorrow. Oh, I love that. And every day we can feast on him and hear his voice in prayer. You know, in the tabernacle, there was a table of fellowship bread. where the, It's called the bread of faces, pananim, where, where these 12 loaves, which represented the 12 tribes of Israel, the people of God, and their loaves, their their. The, the flat bread was like their face was looking up and God was looking down upon their faces. That's why it's called the, the bread of faces. And so that fellowship that we have in intimacy with Jesus, it's the privilege of soaring to the throne room in prayer to touch the face of God and to become one with him. Every relationship is built upon speaking and hearing hearing their heart and you speaking your heart. And so it is with God. We can speak our heart to him. That's called prayer. We can commune with him. We lay our anxieties, our cares. You know, you're concerned about Ukraine and I am too deeply concerned. But God is the one who will answer our cry for the innocence, for those that, that are caught in, in the middle of something they have nothing to, to, to do with. And our prayers can can mount up like incense, can rise up before God's throne. And then he can speak his words to us. He can give us directions in prayer, specific requests, burdens that he can lay on our heart. There's a hundred different ways that he can communicate with us if we'll learn to hear his voice in prayer. So I can I can assure you that whenever you hear him, Whenever you hear God speak to you, it will do two things, at least two things. One, it will change your heart. When God speaks, I mean, the, the cedars of Lebanon, you know, they're splintered, it says in, in Psalm 29, that the voice of the Lord is mighty and powerful, and yet it can be a still small whisper. Whether it's a shout or it's a whisper, it will change you. Come to the place before God where you say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. It's so wrong to say, listen, God, for your servant is speaking. It's not necessarily wrong, but it, it's a focus that we must shift in prayer in saying, God, hear my cry, to saying to our heart, you are going to listen to God's voice today. And when you make that shift You'll begin to hear through the scriptures, through the 33 ways that I'm going to share with you in just a moment. I'm going to read through them kind of quickly. But I want you to see over 33 ways in the Bible where God, that he speaks to his people. 33 different ways. Okay, so people ask me all the time, how do I know if it's God speaking or if it's the enemy speaking? Well, I hope you'll get a pen and paper, write these things down. I'm going to give you nine ways to tell for sure whether it's God or Satan. By the way, Satan is not his name. The devil's, uh, the, the Satan means accuser, slanderer. Have you ever had false accusation? Have you ever been slandered? I have. Well, I, I can know, I know the source of that. It comes from the enemy. It comes from Satan himself because he is the slanderer. It's a title, not a name. That's why we don't capitalize Satan at times in our writings, because it's a title, not a name. His name is Lucifer, but Satan is his title, accuser. That's his job description, slanderer. So there's a voice that will slime you and a voice that will secure you and comfort you. And we've got to learn the difference between uh, the voice of the accuser and the, the voice of the shepherd. So the stranger's voice versus the shepherd's voice. The first one, Jesus is a gentle shepherd. His voice drips with mercy. The kindness of God will bring you to repentance. His goodness is overwhelming. He doesn't accuse, condemn, put you down with a harsh, brutal, robbing you of dignity and value in his eyes. Instead, 
in mercy. He will triumph over what we deserve, the judgment we deserve. His mercy will trump that. It will triumph over that. And his voice drips with mercy. Secondly, the Lord's voice is often quiet and internal. Quiet and deeply internal. Satan's voice is intrusive and vulgar. It comes, uh, you know, it comes like an interruption to us and to startle us. That's not the voice of your shepherd. Third, the Holy Spirit will call us. He'll draw us. He'll speak our name where Satan threatens, demands, drives us. Fourth, the Lord's voice lines up with scripture. This is so important. Obviously, the voice of the Lord is not going to lead you contrary to the written word of God. But the voice of the Lord may contradict your interpretation of the word of God. <laughs> so it's not the word that's being shaken. It's our interpretation, our opinions at times of what God does. I can remember not believing that God speaks today. Uh, I didn't believe that he would give dreams or visions or trances or angels would come or or lift me out of my body and take me into the heavenly realm. I didn't believe any of that. But it's all in the Bible. And when some of those things began to happen to me, I had to adjust my thinking, not to a, a, a doctrinal a doctrinal position of cement that cannot be a flexible to embrace something we've not experienced before, I had to lay my opinions down. Just like we lay down our sins and our addictions, we lay down our opinions. They're just as vile at times. So the Holy Spirit will call and, and, uh, and welcome us where Satan threatens and drives us. The voice of the Lord lines up with scripture. The enemy will speak lies, lies over us. He's the father of lies. And I believe this is number five. The Lord's voice will bring a fresh now word, something that will change you and touch you. It's, it's now speaking to you where Satan has a yesterday word. He has a word of your past, what you failed to do. He's trying to condemn you and accuse you of something that you did, not realizing the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin, <laughs> all our sin. First John. Chapter 1, 8 to 10, we are cleansed of all our sin, even the sins we don't even know about, even our future sins. They've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Jesus didn't die and say, it's almost finished. No, his last words, it's finished, friends. So number six, the Lord's voice is rooted in hope. It will bring hope into your life. Satan brings negativity, darkness, uh, morose, melancholy. He wants to pull you inward to your own issues where the Lord brings us hope for the future and, and restores value and hope to our heart. Satan will leave you hopeless, believe me. And then number seven, God's voice inspires us to love. The voice of the Lord, when he speaks, there's love drenched words something about his voice when he speaks to us it drips with mercy and it and it empowers us to love satan inspires us to criticize if you're given to a critical spirit and you you tend to see the negative and you and you 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 view people through a dark lens you know through their you know the dark room is where we develop our negatives right and, and we begin to think of people in their worst moments instead of the grace God that that the grace of God that will restore and heal and bring them even higher. So love is the key, my friend. And number eight, peace comes from the voice of the Lord. He will bring us a peace. Satan will bring us anxiety. And number nine, the voice of the spirit will always point us to Jesus. Where Satan will glorify self our past, he'll glorify some achievement perhaps we boast in. It's all vanity. It's all vanity. But the voice of the Lord will always stir us to love Jesus and point us to the Christ of Calvary. So we all have that longing to hear from God and to hear of the mysteries of God. And 
And it's been my delight now, 50 years walking with Jesus, to be taken deeper into his heart and, and learning more of his ways. I don't want to just know his word. I want to know his ways. I want to know the heart of God, not letters on a page simply, but the heart behind it. And so this place of intimacy has got to be the key. To hear him speak, friends, means you're going to have to become more intimate with him. That's where revelation is born. That's where the spirit of revelation comes upon my life. It's when I become intimate with God and I throw aside every limitation, barrier, feeling, anxiety, all the pressures of life and distractions. And I say, God, I center my gaze upon you. I look away unto Jesus, the author and completer, the, the perfecter of faith and every virtue. And he meets me there. So how does God speak? I'm going to go through this real quick, and then my wife will join us. Uh, 33 different ways God speaks, but here's the, here's the number one way of the 33. Are you ready? I hope you'll remember this for the rest of your life. God speaks any way he wants to. <laughs> God will speak any way he wants to. So when I go through these 33 here with you real quick, they're not, it's not the, the, encyclopedia it's not the full dictionary meaning there's so much more to the voice of god god will speak to you my friend any way he chooses so every day we wake on our pillow in the morning and we we say lord i'm yours uh, this day is yours i'm your servant speak to me open my ears to hear your voice lord I want the adventure of, of following you and just doing what you have for me today. So here's from the Bible how to uh, different, different ways in which God has actually spoken through these avenues in the word of God. So you ready? First, dreams. <clears throat> I think dreams are so important. My wife has multiple dreams every single night. Every morning we speak about her dreams. We go on a walk together. Usually some mornings, depending on where we are and our busy schedule, but most of the time we're able to walk together. We talk about her dreams, sometimes even before we get out of bed. So pay attention to your dreams. Dreams are the on-ramp to hearing God speak. You say, I never hear God speak. Start pay attention to your dreams and, and, and don't say, oh, I never dream. Yes, you do. You, you should say, I don't remember my dreams. And now, now you're being honest. So what we need is God help me remember my dreams and interpret them properly from the scriptures with your spirit leading me. Another way, pictures in the mind. So many times a picture will flash through our mind. That has happened to me so many times. Uh, often uh, the phone, my phone will ring before I even look to see who's calling a face of someone will flash in front of me. And it's the person that just called. Sometimes that face will come before me a minute or two before they call. And then all of a sudden they, they call me. I go, well, I, I knew you were going to call. How do you know? Well, I touched your spirit. I, I just saw a picture in my mind. Pay attention. It's fleeting. Yes, I know. It's by faith, friends. We hear the voice of the Lord and we speak the word of God by faith. So at times it's so fleeting. It's like a river running by you so fast. But you've got to grab that, that snapshot. Grab that picture in your mind. God is speaking. Visions. Uh, I, I still remember some of the first visions I've ever had. And it was through prayer. It was in the prolonged seasons of prayer, sometimes when I was fasting. And I would have a vision. I would The Lord has encouraged me so many times through a vision. And he, he's used that visualization, that, that visual picture. And he's used it to encourage me and, and to push me forward. I had a vision on the platform speaking in India. And I, there was... Uh, 25 people that I took with me that can verify they were witnesses to this event. And, and on the platform, a TV screen opened up and in a vision, I saw while I'm preaching in my mind, I saw a vision and it was a woman carrying a dead child. And before I could think, I spoke it out. God wants to raise your baby from the dead. 
come right now. And from the back of the crowd of 10,000 people, I heard a scream and this lady comes and her baby had fallen to a drainage ditch in a village hours away. But she'd heard about these meetings we're having and she thought maybe the God uh, the God of glory could raise my child from the dead. She carried that dead infant all the way, hours through the, the, the you know, the countryside in India, jungle, whatever word you want to use to describe it. And God, as soon as she came up to the outskirts of the meeting, she heard that word of knowledge from a vision. Visions, pay attention to them. Oh, by the way, God raised the child from the dead. Amen. Amen. We'll talk about some other time. Parables. God will speak through parables. He will use puns. He will use figures of speech. We had intercessors in our church. We had a powerful intercessory team. Nearly every one of them was getting pictures of, 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 of porpoises, porpoises coming to the coast of New England. Our church was in Connecticut and they saw all these porpoises coming. And I said, that's the purposes of God. The purposes of God are coming to our region. And, and so pay attention to parables, puns, trances. Uh, that has happened. Uh, Peter went into a trance. The ecstasis, the Greek word that, that can, where God takes you from one realm into another realm. And there it's more than a vision. You're, you're actually, it's just so real. You're, you're there. Uh, Holy Spirit, I got to roll through this because my wife's got some things to share. The Holy Spirit, the voice of the Spirit. There are times where the Lord is speaking to you and other times the Holy Spirit will confirm things or speak to you. Angelic visitations, the Bible, scriptures, verses from the Bible that seem to just leap off the page. You're reading along and all of a sudden, boom, this verse explodes in your spirit. The Lord is talking to you. Throne room encounters where you're taken into that blue glory sapphire pavement realm of the throne room. A voice speaking behind us. Isaiah speaks about uh, that you'll hear when you turn to the right or you turn to the left, you'll hear a voice speaking behind you. That has happened. I've heard that. And I'm turning in a circle and the voice is still speaking behind me. So I knew it was the Lord directing my steps. Prophetic words. Prophets can speak to you the word of the Lord. God can speak through people to you. He can speak through your... Uh, the person you're married to. <laughs> he can speak through your children. There's, there's, he can speak any way he wants to. Words in the night where you'll wake up in the middle of the night with a word boiling in your spirit. That's the voice of the Lord. <clears throat> Prophetic actions. Um, I'd love to go into more detail on all of these where, you know, Isaiah wrote on a, on a, uh, like a poster board and he carried it around like a sandwich board, and he wrote the word of the Lord as a prophetic action. Uh, so many times the prophets were called to do that. Personal impressions are a burden. You get a burden to pray for Ukraine. You get a burden to pray for a loved one. That's the Lord speaking to you. Nature, signs and wonders, miracles, everyday circumstances. I've had him speak a word to me uh, written in the dust of, of a semi-truck in front of me. The word of the Lord to me that I needed to hear. And he somehow one person, whoever wrote that there, and it was the word of the Lord to me. Animals speaking, <laughs> right? Balaam's donkey, face-to-face -face encounters. He can speak through the counsel of spiritual leaders, the audible voice, the still small voice, thundering words, riddles, dark speech, the inner voice, conviction of sin, the burning presence that is similar to the burning bush, the, the shrub of fire, spontaneous thoughts and ideas. Many entrepreneurs have a prophetic gift, but it just is applied to their business realm, their business abilities, a settled peace. You can just feel the peace and the presence of God and he's speaking to you. He can speak through closed doors, open doors, the counsel of friends, finances, lack of finances, and the abundance of finances. He can use money to speak to you, and he can even speak through unanswered prayer. Why not get alone with God and, and take some of these? And you may want to play these back and listen to this, or better yet, get the, get the throne room uh, prayer by being a partner, and you can uh, we'll send you a complimentary copy just as soon as we can. You'll, we'll get this to your door. 
and you'll have those 33 different ways that God speaks. And you may want to add some of your own, but that catalog of conversation with God is so important. Um, there's the uh, copy of the book right there. Well, so thrilled to send that to you. You can get it free. Uh, somebody today is going to get it for free. We're going to send you a complimentary copy at the end of the show. And someone else is going to get, wow, looky there, the throne, prayers from the throne room, which is a devotional that goes along with that book. So uh, cool, really cool. Don't forget to be the partner to our ministry. We need you. We bless you. You are the uh, one of the joys of our life, if I could say that the sweet fellowship we have with you, our partners, and uh, we're going to jump on a, a, a back backstage uh, pass here in just a moment. And I'm going to be meeting with all of our partners that have tuned in and we'll have some Q and a and, and some private mentoring with them. Every week we do this at the end of the live class. When we say goodbye to you, we step into a zoom call with partners and get to connect with them. So we'd love for you to join our partner team, passiononfire.com slash partner kit why don't you just write it down and go over and it won't won't hurt anything won't cost you anything to go and look and see what all happens when you become a partner with us candace i hope you can come join me wow right i call her name and she appears <laughs> i love that oh that is so cool candace all right everybody good evening My or wife, good morning or whatever wherever you're at my wife of 50 years right here Hi. and uh, such a prayer prayer partner to me and and uh you you've honey you've taught me so many mm -hmm. lessons that i needed to learn about prayer you have been the one that taught me by your example and just the way you you pray every every moment whenever you see my <laughs> wife candace believe me she's a woman of prayer and she's praying and uh, we pray for our partners. We do. And uh, we, we hope uh, get, get on our prayer list and, and we'll be praying for you, hon. Mm -hmm. So you got some things to share? I do. And if you're new here tonight um, or this morning, whatever, whatever time it is there, um, what I usually do is I read through the whole chapter and then I let the Lord go back and let him speak to me. And uh, he'll just pick out certain verses and then I ask for him to give me something prophetically for you just to help you with your prayer life. So let's start with uh, this first one. The Lord will speak through your prayers. As you enter into prayer with God, he will not only speak to you, but he will, oh, he'll, the Lord will speak through your prayers. So he'll not only speak to you, but he will also pray through you. Oh, my. And uh, when we had our team at our church, we had a prophetic team. They would pray over the visitors and each person had three minutes to uh, do a prophecy, but I told them, you know, if you don't have a prophetic word, just pray over them that three minutes. And uh, they were often surprised that the person would, would say to them afterwards, wow, how did you know that when you prayed? How did you get that? You saw things that uh, I did today or you heard what I said or whatever. So the Lord, when you pray, he's, he'll actually speak through you. So. Matthew 10, 20 says, it won't be you speaking, but the spirit of the father repeatedly speaking through you. Yeah. And I felt like there's some of you listening that are afraid to prophesy because you're worried if it's not, if it's coming from your soul or from your spirit. So I just say to you, try praying before you prophesy. That way, you know, you're in the yeah. spirit and, uh, and see if the Lord doesn't speak after you pray uh, something mm -hmm. else that needs to be said. But Believe me, I don't know about you, but so many times I have actually prophesied as I was praying, had no well, idea. And the person uh, was totally uh, taken aback that uh, I said that or prophesied that over them through the, your, your the prayer. prophetic gift flows through prayer. Yeah. So, but I believe it'll flow through you too. So, Amen. and number two, putting our feet to our prayers. Strategic prayer assignments are often discovered in the secret place. This is the time and place where you'll be trusted with strategic prayer assignments. Uh, many times people will come to me and say, I think you should do this, or I think you should do that. As pastors, we often got people come into our office and would say that, but that's the time that you receive your strate strategic assignments from God. And because he spoke them to you, 
I believe that he wants you to pursue the things that you hear him say in prayer, not just a big ministry or somebody that's uh, more you think is more gifted. He wants to do great and mighty things through you, too. Amen. And uh, he wants to quicken your hearts as you pray. And he's going to show you things that he has for you to do in particular. I hear the Lord saying, this is Psalm 32, 8. I will stay close to you, instructing and guiding you along the pathway for your life. Love that. So, so many times you get things that you think are for somebody else when they're really for you. So take those yeah. things. Yep. Uh, number three, yeah. Satan is accusing, is an accuser and an intimidator. But Jesus is a gentle shepherd and his voice drips with mercy. Uh, it's very important to realize the difference between the two voices, the voice of the yeah. enemy and the voice of, of our our Lord Jesus Christ. And I feel like the Lord says there's somebody listening that you're sabotaging yourself right now. You've been wow. thrown under the bus by somebody else who is constantly speaking lies over you. And you've picked up those lies and allowed the enemy in to make you feel guilty and about things that you had no control over. Wow. And so the Lord wants you just to cut. Actually, I get this word a lot. And I feel like it's because uh, the body of Christ now are you're taking friends that you shouldn't have in your life. And so the Lord wants to cut this friendship off because this person is not good for you. They're not somebody that's boosting you up or uh, encouraging you. So uh, the, the Lord is saying, this is what he says, you're not guilty. And so whose voice are you going to wow. listen to, the Lord or to the enemy's voice? Psalm 109, 4 says, though I love them, they stand accusing me like Satan for what mm. I've never done. God is not accusing you. Romans 8, 33. Who then would dare to accuse, accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be his? God himself is a judge who has issued his final verdict over them. Not guilty. Can I uh, insert can. here? Yeah. This is so important that you reject condemnation, accusation, and slander. It comes from hell. The clang of a of a hammer on a, three nails will drown out that voice of accusation i have uh been affected by mm -hmm. that at times yeah. and it's so important that you hear the voice of god he is not accusing you the holy spirit may convict you right but There's that's a difference. a difference learn yeah. the difference of conviction from the holy spirit and condemnation from the enemy amen so here's the fourth one. It's imperative that your tools for ministry include a consistent life of hearing from him as much as it is with speaking to him. One sided prayer is very tedious and boring. Who can have a true and intimate relationship with someone who doesn't talk or express their emotions? Yeah. Get ready for your relationship to deepen as you begin to each morning with prayer. Isaiah 50 verse four morning by morning. He awakens my heart. He opens my ears to listen to his voice as his disciple. So there are some of you out there, and this is from the Lord, that you're incessant talkers, but you know, there's nothing wrong with talking. God's given you a gift of gab to uh -huh. maybe uh, you're an evangelist or you're a teacher, whatever. So there's okay. that's nothing wrong with that. But we when it comes to uh -huh. prayer, you're gonna have to stop and take time to hear him. And so I feel like the Lord said, in case you're one of those and you're not really hearing him, he, he uh, that you should just try this, try just doing 15 minutes with just worship and sit there and listen to see oh, yeah. if you can hear his voice yes. and just do that every day. till you start hearing him until you hear more and more. But if the worship is distracting, distracting, just try silence. I, I like silence, although I hear so much during worship, too. Uh, sometimes it's just good to be silent and yeah. see if he doesn't speak to you. So just. Try that as an exercise and yes, see if that Lord. doesn't work for you to start hearing his voice. Number five, God's voice inspires us to love. Satan inspires us to criticize uh, others. So I feel like the Lord was saying that there's someone who has a child that very hard to manage. Uh, maybe they're, uh, I don't know what you'd say. You have you a hard to, I mean. manage child. <laughs> hard to manage child. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, the Lord just said, don't tell them that they're bad, but tell, just tell them that they're wrong and they're going to do better next time. 
So um, speak life. Speak life. Yeah. But just like the Lord, He doesn't criticize us unless it's something we really, really need. He'll do it in love. He doesn't uh, say you're bad. He, he'll just say you're going to do a better job yeah. next time and do it in love. Let's so get up and do do it. We just pray the Lord yeah. gives you patience because we've had those times ourselves. But I remember our kids scribbled on our wallpaper one time, and it was that old flocked wallpaper. Oh, wow. And there was just no way we were going to get it off the wall. So um, I knew that I was going to say some things that weren't too good. <laughs> <laughs> they were going to be in real trouble if I got a hold of Whoops. them. So I had to send them to their room until I cooled down that I could say, you know, I know you didn't uh, know what you're doing, <laughs> but we can't scribble with crayons no on the crayons. wallpaper. So uh, sometimes you have to wait till you cool down and then bring them back out. But again. now if it's your adult children, then you really have a problem to do that. I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> they better not. Okay, number six. What would he want to shout at those he loves? God wants to have our focused attention. Yes, Lord. So that the mere look in his eyes would be enough for us to know and understand his heart and his plans for us. He, he shouldn't yeah. have to ever shout to us. Uh, focus is the key in prayer. Be looking for him to guide you at all times. And uh, this week, each time you get into a difficult situation, I want you to just stop and look into his eyes before saying anything or moving wow. forward. Wow. It might save your life, actually. Wow. I mean, we've had those times. We just had to stop and look in his eyes and let him help us. So, Guys, I think we're going to wrap it up with, with this. And uh, the one thing the Lord, I heard him say to me, you say, well, if you talk about you hearing God all the time, well, what's he saying to you? Well, he told me that he will even speak to me. And I should have put this on my list. He says, I will speak to you in your anxieties, in your worries. Like, you know, we hear the news of, of this calamity happening in Europe and uh, it's like it's affecting us all and, and in many levels. And the Lord is saying, let every anxiety nudge you. Let it be my Holy Spirit nudge to pray. Let it be a, a cord to draw you closer to me. Instead of stopping and worrying and sitting there in that anxiety, make it a trampoline and, and bounce from that anxiety into intercession and learn to pray through those anxieties that come. That's what I was doing today mm -hmm. when I felt, uh, you know, concern about things. If you get concerned about a friend, your family that is in need or international mm -hmm. affairs, <clears throat> let it be a springboard. Let it be like a trampoline that you, you bounce from that. Yeah. You go down and hit it, but you bounce out of that anxiety into the adoration. God, you are so yes. big. You're bigger than this. You have this in your hands. So with that, we're going to leave you. And and uh, I'm going to pray right now. I want us to pray for Ukraine and for what's mm -hmm. happening. Yes. We want to take that springboard. Yes. And I know some of you have really, really desperate mm -hmm. needs in mm -hmm. your finances, your health, yes. and your family members. And, and I don't want to ignore any of that. But I feel drawn right now that we would pray, all of us, we would pray uh, big prayers for Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Father, we ask that wars would cease. Lord, we ask that the Prince of Peace would stand uh, with one foot in Russia and one foot in the Ukraine mm -hmm. and would declare and speak peace. Lord, we look to you as the, the one who calms the storm, the yes, one Lord. who causes wars to cease, the one who brings uh, reconciliation and, and peace, Lord. And uh, this is not just a fancy whim. This is not just a wish. This is our cry, God. This is our cry to you. Step in, almighty God, mm -hmm. sovereign king of the nations. This is not yet the time, mm -hmm. Lord, for judgment to fall upon this planet. Let turn back, turn back, turn back. Yes. Yes, the Lord. enemy's plans to hasten our planet into destruction and devastation. And we ask God that you would fight this battle. Yes, Lord. Yes. And we thank you for the precious brothers in Ukraine and our Russian Christian friends yes, as Lord well. Jesus. We thank you for the brothers and sisters yes. in those nations. Watch over them, guard their hearts, yes, give them safety, protection, especially the Ukrainian church, Lord. We thank you for your mercy that will triumph over judgment. Intervene, step in, Lord. 
push back the dark clouds over Europe, we pray. You, we ask you to do it in a glorious, yes. mighty name of Jesus, commander of angel armies, Yahweh our King. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, we're going to say goodbye and jump over and greet our partners in the Zoom uh, Zoom room. But okay. uh, hey, why don't you? Uh, do we have the do we have the uh, the winners? Okay, uh, we're going to post the winners. So stay right tuned. Here. Wayne McEwen. Hey, <laughs> Wayne. Yo, Wayne. Good for you, Wayne. Congratulations, and we're going to send the devotional, which and is Lisa. right here. And Lisa Wilkinson, we will send you a complimentary copy of the Throne Room Prayer Book. That is so great. I love doing this. I love giving stuff away, don't you, Wayne? I do, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Wayne and Lisa, God bless the two of you, and enjoy that gift from us. And, uh, hey, if you'd like to be a partner with us, that website is passionofire.com slash partner kit. And we have an entire kit prepared to uh, entrust you with uh, once you become a partner to our ministry. And that website will have all the details, answer every question you have about what it means to be a partner with us. And there's different ways you can you can support and stand behind us. And we appreciate every single one of you. God bless you, friends. Wayne, Lisa, congratulations. And partners, stay tuned. We're going to jump right now over to that Zoom room. And next week, part two of Hearing the Voice of God. So much more we want to share with you. So we'll see you next week, guys. Love you. Bye-bye.